Uh, I'm trying to think. I think the first guy I trained for the NFL Combine was Bill Brooks, and I'm going to say that was 1984. So if we're thinking 84, 20, 26 years maybe, I don't know. It was a long time ago. Uh, actually, Pete Williams, it's interesting, there's a book called The Draft, and Pete Williams in the book, The Draft, gives me credit for inventing the idea of the Combine Camp. I think we were the first people to ever bring athletes in from out of state, put them up, house them, feed them, and train them for the NFL Combine. I think that was probably 1995, which was about 10 years after I started actually doing it. I think the big thing they can expect here, one, is to really get to understand the process of the events. It's funny now, there's a really big emphasis on position drills, and a lot of these places run it like a day camp where they try to keep the kids busy all day, and you're going to do this, and we're going to bring in a position coach. We're not going to try to teach anybody to play football. I think it's crazy to teach a kid to play football in five or six weeks who's been playing football for God knows how many years. Our emphasis is going to be on training for the combine. We always talk about the fact that this is the big job interview, and when you go there, there's a very specific set of skills that you haven't worked on. Football is something you've worked on extensively, but you haven't spent the time preparing for the actual drill. So most of our emphasis is going to be on getting ready to do the drills that you're going to do at the combine. I think they'll do excellently. I, you know, our, our record speaks for itself. If somebody ever really wants to go back and look at the stats and go back through, a lot of the great combine surprises are people that we've trained. If you can go back to Eric Swan, which I think was, it might even have been in the 80s, but he was the first non-college player ever get drafted in the top 10 picks. He was drafted eighth overall by Arizona. And you know, you can go back to Mike Mamula, which they still talk about. People still talk about somebody having a Mike Mamula-like combine. Mike went out and actually outbenched most of the linemen and outran a lot of the receivers as a 255-pound defensive end. So, you know, we've had a really big history of people exceeding what they were expected to do. It's not unusual for us to have the fastest guy at positions, and they're not generally guys. It's one thing people always brag about. They got the fastest guy to be the fastest guy. That, to me, is, you know, you get a first-round pick drafted in the first round, you didn't really do anything for us. It's when you get these guys to sort of skyrocket up, when you get the Mike Mamoulos and the Eric Swans and some of these guys. John Harris was another guy that got drafted in the first round out of Virginia that nobody had heard about. We had a lot of those types of guys. Marcellus Wiley went in the second round out of Columbia that nobody had ever heard of. You know, We've had a long history of guys doing better. And most importantly, we're getting guys ready to make teams. Last year, we had a group of kids that were, a, you know, an unheralded group of guys. Not, I don't think we had one guy get drafted, but we had four guys make teams. We had 12 guys here. One guy got drafted, four guys actually ended up on teams during that NFL season. And that, to me, is the kind of staff that I like.